Hi everyone and welcome to Mike Likes Robots. Today I've got something a bit different for you. Instead of going through another AWS tutorial, we're going to be setting up our first robot. I was lucky enough to get my hands on a JetBot, specifically the Waveshare JetBot AI kit. I'll link it in the description. And here it is. So I'll be showing you some close-ups and we'll be setting up the SD card and getting it moving. So let's get to it. So here's our JetBot. Let's take a closer look. We'll start from the bottom. We can see that we've got two wheels for driving. There's motors inside that I'll show in a moment. And there's casters here, which can move in any direction. And that's what allows the robot to spin in place just from two wheels moving it. So let's get this lower tray open and have a look inside. Here we are, we've opened the bottom tray up and we can see that inside is just two motors that are connected through these ports to the board that I'll show you in a moment. Now if you're hooking these up and you don't know which way around it goes, the camera is at the front of the bot and if you look carefully at the ports, they're labelled right and left. So make sure you have those connected correctly and I'll put the tray back on. And we're back to the top side of the robot where I've just detached the board. Uh, it's still got a couple of wires attaching it or a wood if I hadn't broken one. So these black wires feed through behind the board and down to the bottom to attach to the antennae. These antennae here are for Wi-Fi connection. I haven't tested how far they can go, but I imagine with this size it's quite a bit further than your phone or laptop. And then this board here is really what we want to look at. So if I pull this out of the way. This is the Waveshare board that's attached underneath the dev kit. So we've got a cable that attaches to the dev kit. We've got a set of rechargeable batteries. This uh, port here is a 12.6 volt charging port and it will recharge these batteries. And then the LCD screen here is great for showing the IP address, which is quite a common problem when you're first setting up a robot. Uh, how do you actually connect to it? And we'll see how to do that. Uh, now I'll reattach this board on top and we'll take a look at that as well. Now this dev kit has been screwed back in. So this is the Jetson Nano dev kit with the Jetson Nano module plugged in. So we can see, uh, I think it's a PCI slot here with a fan controller plugged in here. This is the uh, four gigabyte model and I'll talk more about how to identify that later. And now we just need to reattach the power connection to the lower board and the Pi cam. So to do that, we're just going to plug in the header here and the Pi cam connection you would have seen this with the Raspberry Pi as well if you have it but there's a plastic uh, tray that snaps in or unplugs. Now when it's unplugged it's still attached but it will let the uh, camera ribbon plug in so that's what we're going to do now so you can hold the ribbon in place and push the drawer in to lock the ribbon in place. Now on this module, the chip is on the underside of the fan here and the SD card slot is here. So we can detach this by just pressing it in which snaps that card out, and then we can grab that. Let's take a look at how to set the SD card up. So now we want to set up the JetBot software. And to do that, we can download an image from this website, which contains all of the software we need to flash onto the SD card. 
So we can take a look at the releases. There's Jetson Nano 2 gigabytes and Jetson Nano 4 gigabytes. And if there's a good way of telling whether your board is 2 gigabyte or 4 gigabyte, please leave it in the comments. I have a way, but I'm not sure it's the right one. And my way is that if the USB port on the board is a micro USB port, then it's a 4 gigabyte board. If it's a USB C port, then it's a 2 gigabyte board. I confirmed that mine was a 4 gigabyte by first flashing the 2 gigabyte image and seeing that it didn't work. So I advise you to find out in advance instead of making the same mistake as me, because flashing takes a bit of a while. So our image is the Jetson 4 gigabyte, and we can click on this to download it. The step two includes using Etcher, which is this website here. So you can download that and do the portable or the full version. I've installed the full version. So let's set up that flashing and see how long it takes. So here we have the Belena Etcher application. So we can start by clicking Flash from File and selecting our JetBot Nano 4 gigabyte file. Next, we'll select the target. We've got one SD card in, so we'll tick the single generic storage device, select one, and click Flash. Now we have our flashed SD card, let's get it plugged in. Then the instructions say to plug the power in directly to the board, but last time I set this up I worked on it just with the battery power, so I'm just going to flick the switch on. And there it is, starting up. The next thing the guide says to do is to plug it into a monitor with HDMI and a keyboard, but I found it's fine just to plug it into Ethernet, get the IP address, and then SSH directly. So I'm going to do that again. Here's our Ethernet cable. And there we can see it's set up and it has the IP address 1.234. So let's go to the computer and connect. Now we have access to the PC. We're going to SSH the board. And the username is Jetbot. So we use Jetbot at 192.168.1.234. Give it the password again, Jetbot. And we're in. Now what we want to do is set up the Wi-Fi connection so that we don't need to keep the Ethernet cable plugged in. And for that, we're going to use the NMCLI. That's the Network Manager command line interface. So we can execute sudo NMCLI device Wi-Fi. Let me give the name of the network, then type password and the password to the network. With that, it's successfully activated, so it's got Wi Fi access. Now we can shut down now. And turn the power off on the board. The next time this reboots, we don't need the cable connected and it should connect directly to Wi-Fi. So let's test that out. Just need to give it a moment to boot up. And then we have a new IP address connected to WLAN 0. We're ready to connect in the browser. So now to access the robot through the browser, we need to give the new IP address, which is 192.168.1.235. Then we put colon 8888.
Now we would get a username and or just a password prompt, and the password there is Jetbot. Uh, I've already signed in once, so it just went straight through. This is a Jupyter server running on the board, which allows us to execute Python code from Jupyter Notebooks. So let's open up Jetbot Notebooks. I'm just going to run the basic motion notebook to see how it works. This notebook describes how to operate the robot from the very basics. We're just going to run through executing the Python commands. First, import the robot. And this star here means it's executing, and a one means it's finished, and it's the first command to finish. Now we'll instantiate the robot which worked immediately, and now we should be able to move the robot. Go straight to the next command, and stop the robot again. Now for a, a special treat, this is my cat. I don't think the robot is getting the cat's seal of approval. Let's carry on working through the notebook. Uh, we can import time, and that lets us sleep for half a second, which means we can start to build up routines like spin left at half speed or at 0.3 speed, wait half a second and then stop again. So we get half a second spins. Let's see that a bit clearer without the notebook. We start the robot spinning and stop it again. And we'll spin for half a second at a time. We can also set motors individually. What we can do as well is edit how long it's moving for. Let's run it for 0.2 seconds instead. And by running the two motors at different speeds, the robot will move forward and turn to the side. Let's execute that again. And one more time. And again, let's see that full screen. So with that, we've seen that we can remote control to a robot running on battery power. And using the browser, we can execute Python commands to turn the motors at specific rates. From there, we can start to build up Python commands that will run the robot to do different programs. So there we have our first robot moving around. Next time, we'll try and get ROS running on it so that we can start to see some of the cloud connections I've been showing you in other videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if it was useful and if there's anything else you'd like to see. And I'll see you in the next one.